Hey y'all, welcome to Parker's Reef. On today's episode, we're gonna take another tank tour, this time of Troy's first ever reef, and it's an eight foot monster. Alright, thank you for joining me on another episode of Parker's Reefs and as touched on in the intro, today we're going to go see a local to me, Troy does live in the Geelong region and he has had a custom reef tank running now for a bit over a year and um, I had the pleasure of meeting him about six months ago when he has gone through a few troubles with his tank and a couple of challenges like we all do and I can say that seeing this tank flourish and grow over the last six months has been an absolute joy and I'm super, super proud to be able to share share that tank with you guys at home today. Now do bear in mind this tank has been running for just over a year and it is Troy's first ever reef tank which is hard to believe when you see how well he's doing with it but um, I don't know if I've got much more to say other than the roller footage. I hope you enjoy it as much as I did bringing it to you. All right I am here at Troy's place checking out this incredible custom tank. Your first tank I believe. Is this Correct. your first reef tank? Correct. Amazing. All right. Well, you, I mean, you've got to tell us the story. First of all, what's the dimensions on this beast? Um, it's 2.4 um, by about 550 to 600. I can't remember the exact amount. Um, we wanted to go wider, but because of our sliding door here, we were a bit limited. That's why we had to go custom build. Yep. Yep. And what led you to, well, actually, before we get to that, how long has the tank been running for at this um, point? About 14, 15 months. Okay. So we just passed the year mark. It's yep. really starting to fill out quite nicely. Now, what... Yep. We touched on just there in the intro, this is your first reef tank. Correct. Yeah. What made you um, just jump into a big custom build reef tank like um, this? We've always kept fish tanks. Um, yes. Most of the time, Africans and, and tropical. Sure. Always wanted to branch out to reefing, but always been a bit nervous about how full on it was going to be. And um, we did a lot of research and we found out that um, everything we're reading was the bigger you go, the the more it costs, but the easier it is in the <laughs> yeah. terms of like, if something can go wrong, it takes a lot longer to, to take over your tank and you've got yeah. plenty of time to react to things. And um, we just went, screw it and fit the biggest tank we could fit in, in the end. And, and we ended up here, which is fantastic. And yeah. for a first reef tank, man, that's looking pretty sweet indeed. We'll go through the uh, livestock and, and some other things uh, a little bit later, but I think it's always good to start off with sort of a bit of a, uh, a run through of the equipment and, and your choices around that equipment. And um, yeah, we'll, maybe we'll start from the top. What, what sort of lighting is this unit running? Yep. Um, so we're running, uh, we started with Kessels. Yes. And we quickly realized that they probably weren't quite enough. Okay. So we ran a, an AI blade, which has been in for about four months now. Yeah, nice. And noticing like tenfold the, the difference in the coral growth and the amount of algae we're having to clean off the glass. <laughs> it's always a good sign yeah. for them. algae yeah. on the glass means there's plenty of light energy in the tank. And yeah, that's it. Whilst algae is not always uh, aesthetically desirable, it does mean there's plenty of life. And obviously yeah. if algae is growing, coral is growing. So that's that's a good sign. And I do love the, the ease of mounting the, the blades yeah, there. Yeah, we, we try to make it easy. We actually had it off that back post originally. Yes. But the cornice was getting in the way of the brackets. Yep. And yep. they were sort of bending down and stuff. So we actually moved it off the front bracket not long ago and it's much better yes it's holding but i have to move the light out if i ever want to do work in the tank i've got to lift it up because i just yeah, can't okay. get my arms in anymore <laughs> yeah that um, is one of the uh, challenges of having lots of lights yeah. over the and tank the, the i guess thin, the thin tank makes it difficult for lighting positioning is what yeah I found. yep yep for uh, sure we don't have much of an option it's sort of just got to be there <laughs> does the trick and I like um, yeah, the way you've got the castles nice evenly spaced there and then the bar just fills in the gap between yeah, them. Yeah. And this hood, I mean, these, these, even these uh, hinges up here look familiar. You've got yeah, a, they, they look a familiar. hinge. Yeah. <laughs> we don't quite have the, uh, the electric power heads the way you have in yours, but it still lifts. It still lifts. No, it makes life <laughs> nice and easy to access yeah. in there and it, it tucks all that away and all the light and heat and noise and everything when you uh, yeah. don't want that yeah. in That's your, because uh, we're, we're literally standing in your kitchen right now. So yeah. kitchen dining room so you can close it yeah, up and exactly keep things right. aesthetic. Originally when we got the tank built by Billy at, at Starfire, we had it with just like a little um, oh, hood a around crown. the top. Yeah. Yep. yep. And the kessels were... Um, mounted on these and that's where they've obviously come from yes so you could see all the lighting and then um i think we had that for about six months and then i decided now we've got to fill it all in because the yeah. lights were just it does pretty, get a bit blinding pretty blinding yeah <laughs> as you can see right now and i reckon the castle sat a little bit higher 
yes. previously as well. So and, I mean, you've got a little one too, and when uh, you get down a little bit lower, those oh, lights are even more yeah, in your it's eyes. Not, <laughs> it's not great, yeah, yeah, hundred percent. Definitely not. And I love this uh, metal frame that you've got in there that uh, yeah gives it the meat to mount those lights. Yeah, too. so that's, that's, that's courtesy of my old man. He's he's a boiler maker by trade. I'm just in uh, business and. Um, Handy Every time I have skills. an idea, I just throw it at him. And he tells me if it's possible or not. <laughs> well, he's done some beautiful work there. That's, uh, yeah, that's yeah. come up a treat. Yeah, it looks great. Fantastic. Well, that's the lighting, which um, yeah, I'm super impressed with. It looks great. Moving down into the tank, uh, yep. flow in the tank. I can see a couple of gyres in there. Yeah, a couple of gyres. So they were the ones that came. Um, Billy had that all in his package. Yes. Um, so they're really good. Fine to have to clean them probably more often than I am. Um, yes. I had them, had them up to like 90% a couple of weeks ago and um, decided they probably needed their first clean. <laughs> and now I've got them back down to 40% and yeah. they're just flowing real good again like yeah, that with yeah. you. So, yeah, the um, guys are a pump that as soon as they get any sort of uh, film build up on them, they, their flow does drop off yeah, significantly. Yeah, exactly right. Conversely, and because when they're clean, they go pretty nuts again. That's right. And because the tank's so thin, we couldn't put the gyro in here. Yes. Um, so we had to add another pump eventually. Um, I can't exactly remember which one it is, but yep, um, yep. we had to go a thin, a thin magnet on the back, so we were pretty limited to what we could actually get. Sit down the back there, yeah, yeah. yep, yep. No, that so, works out well. And gives and I think a nice bit of flow. Eventually we'll upgrade the, the gyros probably, but um, for now they're doing the job. They look to be working a treat. I mean, you can see things yeah. like this leather here, just real nice, gentle flow across it there, just enough to keep those polyps moving and, and yeah. doing everything they should do. So, no, they're working well. And as you say, when they're clean, they're only on, you know, what was it, 40% yeah, or something? Yeah, I think they're running at 40, and I think I've got this one at 20 or 30. Yeah, so you got But 20. I can't. If I go anymore, he's going to blow the, the SPS off there. <laughs> <laughs> a little too much flow. Yeah. No, that, that's working well. And I did notice when you had the hood up there, you've got uh, the return coming up over this yeah, end just so, so that the flow sort of goes from one end to the other. That was how Billy designed it all, which um, he said was sort of something that he not many people do. Yep. He does them in his tanks. Yep. It looks a bit ugly, but it seems to do a really good job and it does exactly what it's designed to do, so. Yeah, no, it's functional. That way it ensures, like, obviously that's your overflow end there, so yeah, that's correct. what's going into the sump. Yeah. Your, uh, for lack of better words, your filtered, your, your water from the sump is yeah. coming up at the other end of the tank, so it's, it's got to pass all the way through. It makes sense to yeah. um, just eliminate any sort of dead spots I get, so no, that's, that's good. Yeah. And I guess flowing uh, or following on from that, that then leads down into the equipment underneath. Mm -hmm. what, what are we running down there? Um, it was very basic when we started. We tried to keep things really, really simple. <laughs> and then um, every time we've had an issue, we've just kept adding stuff, basically. <laughs> so uh, The old Reef Keeper's Lego, hey? <laughs> yeah. Originally, this was um, just filter media down the side, and we yes. took that bit of glass out and put the roller in. Because sure. um, with the, we just kept adding fish, basically, and um, I was changing that that Dacron top filter like, yeah, every okay. two days, and it was yep. still my head in. So. Yep, yep. We forked so, out for the Clarice, um, which for the most part I really like, but at the moment it just keeps giving me alarms. I think yeah, I just okay. haven't straightened the, the roll properly, but right, right. I'm just dealing. It still works, it just screams at me every now and again. <laughs> <laughs> just wants attention. Yeah, exactly right. <laughs> well, um, at least it looks like the mat's very dirty there, like it's doing its job. Yeah, it's yeah, it's, pulling, definitely, pulling. it's definitely working. Definitely, yeah. Um, the phosphate reactor um, wasn't something that came with the sort of deal we had with Billy. Yep. But we've added that because we just, we were overfeeding a lot early days. <laughs> we were feeding our reef tank like we were feeding our African cichlids. And yeah, okay. Was, um, you know, it's... Just, yeah, <laughs> Great for the fish. Our phosphates were going for the roof. The fish were getting big. Uh, but yeah, the phosphates were... For fish and the we algae get were getting big. <laughs> Corals yeah, not so much, exactly but uh, right. that's obviously helped rectify that phosphate issue. Yeah. And, and you just, that's just a two little fishies, phosphate yeah. reactor yep. with... Um, some uh, phosphate media yep. in there. Yep, and a couple of heaters that are in there. Everything's a little bit jammed in that first, in that first section. No, um, it's just the heaters efficient barely, use of the space. The heaters barely ever run. Like yep. Yep. This fish tank basically heats the whole house, to be yep. honest. So, yep. I find the same um, thing with my system. Yeah. The heaters are there really only if we leave the windows open overnight. <laughs> yeah, exactly right. Like I think the tank was at 26 yesterday, um, and it wasn't even that hot. Yeah. Then overnight it dropped two degrees. Yep. Um, but when when we uh, when the weather outside is like 26, 27, I've got to have the aircon running inside. Yeah, yeah. Um, we just don't have room for a cooler, so we just run run the ducted system, and yep, it seems to keep it 
around that 25 mark on a hot day. So Absolutely. happy with that. That does the trick, yeah. works well. And then we just go into the big skimmer, which is probably a bit overkill for our tank. I um, love a big skimmer. And um, when we were dealing with Billy, he just said, um, I'll build the sump and put it in the cabinet and then whatever size skimmer we can fit in there will fit the biggest one basically. <laughs> and I was like, yeah, that's fine. Yep. Not knowing anything about it, to be honest. <laughs> um, but yeah, that, that skimmer has been grouse. Um, it's a, is that an octo? I think so. Yes. Yep. 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 Yeah. It's a so big unit. Needs an empty at the moment, but. You know, you can see the quality of uh, skimmate it's pulling out. Yeah. It's, it's definitely nice, doing a really fine good white bubble in there. Just in fact, you can barely see the bubbles in there. It's that fine. Yeah. It's just, it's just white. <laughs> yeah. Working yeah. The treat. And we're pumping air from, from outside into yeah, the nice. as well. Yep. So nice, yep. Nice fresh air coming feed. through the wall. Yeah. Lovely. Um, and then we go into Refugium, which was, which was originally the, the heating station. Yes. Um, still a work in progress. We did have it running for about six months and the detritus just took over. Yeah. Okay. Um, I think we worked out that it wasn't enough flow. So yep. we're, I've actually, I've ordered a power head not long ago and we've just got that uh, macro aggregate off yourself. Yep. Yep. Um, so hopefully that power head comes this week and we can put it in there, get some more flow and stop that detritus. Cause that whole section was just <laughs> purple. Um, yeah, yeah, cleaned yeah. that out about a week ago and it's already coming back. So, um, <laughs> I suppose it's a good problem to have. Um, and I'm finding that I'm having to keep block the light from getting into the, um, as the dosing goes off, um, <laughs> having to block the light from getting into the skimmer because the algae was in growing inside the skimmer. Yeah, okay. Um, yep, yep. Which is not easy to clean. No, <laughs> yeah, you get light and that nice uh, sort of bubble feed in there and yeah, the algae just, uh, it just thrives in there. So. Yeah, exactly right. <laughs> Makes it a challenge. Um, but... And that's, that refugium is just a cheap house light with a Bunnings lamp, like. Yeah, yeah, um, no, it'll grow algae just fine, yeah, I have no I doubts. Th I, th I think we want to we wanna upgrade the light and get like a proper refugium light, but We'll wait until it actually starts working, I think, and then we'll yeah. have a look at it maybe. Look, I, I've experienced both, and I, I do run a proper Kessel Refugium light now, and look, it, it's great. It's also like a $900 light. Yeah, more expensive <laughs> than these. Yeah, um, <laughs> and look, it, yeah, it, it does work great. I reckon it probably works 10% better than the house light, Yeah. and the house light setup's like 30 bucks. Yeah, yeah exactly right. <laughs> so, yeah, yeah is it better? Yes. Yeah. Is it, um, you know, like, I think we're iron off the blade. times better. <laughs> I think we're iron off the blade refugium. Light, yeah. I okay. Think. Yeah. Yeah. Hell well, of a lot cheaper, and it doesn't feel so cheaper. bad. Well, that's and one I definitely success, haven't tried. Yeah. Yep. With the success we've had with with that blade up there. Yeah. I think it's a no brainer for us. Yep. If no, we're going to upgrade, sense. that's probably what we're going to go. Yeah. Good. Good. Yep. Yep. No, um, I'd be curious to see how that works out. That's yeah. Good choice, I think. And then it just goes into our return section, which is where all our dosing goes in as well. Yep. Yep. Um, Recently set up that Hannah monitor, which um, having oh, yeah. issues with still. Oh no! Um, but it's just I just need to go and get some more, um, some more of the uh, some calibration yeah, stuff. Some calibration stuff. Yeah, okay. Oh. Um, I ended up messaging Hannah. Instructions weren't great on yep. the calibration. Um, apparently, you have to put both of the pins into all the calibration things right, rather okay. than one at a time. And I yes. Instructions didn't say that, I, yeah. I don't think. So <laughs> So I've gone and used up all the calibration liquid oh, thinking, no. oh, maybe this one's just not quite. I'll open the second one and then yep. the same problem. So all right, well, hopefully we can so, get that working then. Cause yeah, yeah, I'll get into Dave next time. I'm, next time I'm heading down to Melbourne. Um, yep, yep. We're a fair hike away, so it's a big commitment getting down there. It's like a whole day, so. Yeah, big trip up yeah. to the city. <laughs> yeah, exactly <laughs> no, it's right. Like, you're even further out than I am. So yeah. yeah, as you say, it's a decent commitment. Yeah, exactly right. Um, um, also see a UV plumbed in line off the return pump there. Yep. So that wasn't an original thing. Yep. Um, we had quite a bad case of, uh, flukes and, and white spot. Yep. Um, so, um, that literally, I think about four to five months in pretty much wiped out like 60%, 70% oh, of the man. fish we had in there. You're doing so well that was, to still be here because there was like, a big learning curve. As a first reef tank, you get four months in. At that point, you know, you're getting pretty excited. Your yeah. corals are showing some color, your fish are doing good, and then you cop a wipeout like that. Yep. That's when a huge percentage of people There's, just pack it up and put it on Facebook Marketplace. I think there is four fish in there that are original. Yeah. Who okay. survived that white spot. Yeah. Yep. He's obviously one of them. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> the boss. Yep, yep. Yeah. Yeah. Um, <laughs> But yeah, so then in, inside, we've got a spare spot at the moment. We've, yep. That was the original ATO. Yes. And now we're running um, 
uh, that new dosing pump from Kamoa at the top. Yep, yep. And that's running straight from the shed. So that line goes up into the roof about 25 metres down to the shed and yeah, yeah, a big drum out there with RO in it, which I'm currently running a bit of salt in because our salt levels are a touch low. Sure, yep. Nice so, gentle way to raise the salinity. Yeah. Works well. Um, so, yeah, so you've got using the... Um, the Kamoa X1 Pro T2 pump up the top there is your yep. ATO because it's got the oomph to draw water a fair yep. way. And then yep. I see the Kamoa yeah, X2 water RS yep. auto water change below it. That thing's a life changer. <laughs> auto water That's, changes um, are one of those things. That I just... reckon that dropped the the monthly or the, the maintenance in general by 70%. Yeah, nice. Yeah. Um, now all, all we have to do is just swipe the glass pretty much and clean, yeah. out, the, clean out the skimmer like every two weeks. And that's about it. Um, yep. Some top up the fluids. I mean, we're not dosing a hell of a lot yet. We're still yeah. only at like 27 mil of the, um, I think it's the Aquaforest, the three part. Yep. Beautiful. Um, Good combo. And then uh, we're adding extra alk, which yep. um, we currently have an issue with. We're still trying to get it up there, but I think we've almost at, almost at the turning point. Yeah, nice, um, nice. But yeah, they water change units grouse. We, I move, because of our phosphate issues, um, we move seven liters three times a day. Yep. So okay. morning, midday, and evening. Nice. Um, try and make it the times we're not home because it's a pretty loud unit. Yep. <laughs> um, All right. So we're out in your back shed where yep. you've, I mean, you've gone legit here. You've got a couple of IBCs all set up. I did see uh, you've got the, the fill point here goes through the through the door, so you yep. can just clip onto that and fill them up from uh, Bruce, our lovely local water guy. That's right. Yeah. And <laughs> does the trick well. Yeah. Uh, it's, walk us through it. How, how's this setup work? You, um, you've got an auto water change drawing from it. Yeah, yeah. So originally we um, we were just making our own salt in yep. uh, little like two hundred and twenty gallon or two hundred and twenty liter drums. Yes. Um, and we were just fine, and we were just, just making it RO nonstop. Yeah, um, yeah. It's a hard work. And job. then we got put onto um, yeah, to Dave, a uh, uh, Bruce, sorry. Um, so he brings in the water for us now. We got these two IBCs set up. Yep. Um, so yeah, it gets pumped into the top yep. and then we just we suck out of the bottom one and it's basically just like a, a, a fail system so yep. whenever yep. this one runs out we call bruce and yep. he's got three weeks or four weeks to get here exactly, whenever he yeah. can so same sort of um, deal i've got i run two ibcs once one of them's empty yeah that's it <laughs> i know just, i've got a while to the next ones here that's all we do we yeah just right. got a little plum in here and it just fills up the bottom easy as that um as gravity long as the water doesn't go below here, it's just gravity feed into a bucket if we need more salt water. Yeah, beautiful. Um, trying to keep it as simple as possible. Works well. Um, we did have an issue earlier. We tried to uh, keep the water swirling in the bottom, okay. bottom tank. Um, and what we actually did was the, the John Guest fittings and piping that we went down, down I zip tied it to the pump, yes. the power head. Yep. Power head was spinning. Oh, it was spinning just, inside the thing. So our uh, John Guest John fitting Gestalt. just just oh, no. absolutely tangled the crap out of itself. <laughs> um, <laughs> so we learned pretty quick about that. So now we don't circulate anything. Yep. Um, I just come out here every couple of days and do that for yeah, a couple yeah. of minutes. Um, and that seems to be enough. We're not, I mean, this has been running now for, I want to say six, seven months and I'm not seeing any, any growth or any algae or nothing. Nah, they well, still look pristine. So. Nice in the shed here. I know it looks really bright on camera, but it's um, well out of natural light here. Yeah. And uh, Bruce's water comes in filtered on the way in. There's very little stuff in it. Yeah. You may find one thing I do maybe like once a year, um, you could hook up a pump to the, uh, the bottom one and uh, pump it up to the top one up here, put like a filter sock in the neck. Yeah. Um, and just let it run for a couple of hours, just yep. cycle the water through and yeah. any sort of sediment there will get picked up. But yep. there's very little there. And even if there is, it's it's not doing any harm. It's yeah. not leaching yep. any sort of toxic substance or yeah, anything. Exactly it's, right. There's a little bit of natural organic that yep. might help uh, bring a little bit of nitrates up or something like yeah, that. Yeah, exactly <laughs> right. Nothing to stress about. Um, and this system is, yeah, you, so you mentioned you got the John Guest and that yep. comes up. And, so oh, the John yeah, Guest runs the all the way up, down yeah. there all the way through to the front of the shed. And yep. then we've got a um, stainless steel pipe that runs between the shed and the house. Yeah, nice. And then it all runs through the roof and um, comes back down in that Beautiful. cabinet above the above the tank. And buckets no more. Um, buckets no more. <laughs> the occasional bucket for um, adding a little bit of salt. Yep. Um, but yeah, which as you really. say, you've got that neat little setup there. Yeah. So if you need to get a little manual bucket of salt, it's as easy as turning on a tap and uh, get a bit yeah. out and Yeah, exactly right. And um, yeah, originally making that salt and 
well, I think we were getting five or 400 litres per bucket. And the yeah. bucket was 130 bucks. Yeah. And then Bruce was 130 bucks for a thousand litres. So, exactly. And it's, so it's already, delivered, it's mixed, it's right. That's it. And you You've got it that in. upfront cost of the IBCs. Of course. I think they were like 200 and some bucks each. Yep. But they've already well and truly paid for themselves. Definitely. Um, and I mean, I've ran Bruce's water for over 10 years now. We're super, super lucky here in, yeah. in the region we're in that one in Australia that we have access to beautiful salt water, which is yeah. something we do take for granted, not possible in a lot of other parts of the world where yeah. their natural salt water is not great and they really need to go artificial. Yeah. But to add another layer to that again, Bruce here in, in the Geelong region, has a, a fairly uh, top secret process that he does. He doesn't just collect the water and deliver yeah. it, he collects it and processes it at home for a number of weeks before delivering. And um, it's the best of both worlds. Yep. Um, you get natural salt water with all those natural organics, but you also get the elements adjusted to any parameter you want. Yeah, yeah. Um, and it's consistent every time. And uh, Bruce has been in the industry forever and a day. I yeah. won't uh, embarrass the guy with the number of years, but <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> he's, he's a stalwart in the industry down this way. So yeah. anyone in this region, I recommend uses Bruce Water. And as you say, it's it's actually a cost effective alternative yeah, as well. It really is, especially yeah. if you've got a if you've got the room and you've got a big tank. Yep. Um, because I think he's I think it's 130 bucks, um, and that's just delivery. So that's anything from. Yeah. 100 litres to 1,000 litres, whatever yes, you want. Yes, exactly, so yeah. The bigger yeah. you can go, the more cost-effective it is. Of course. That's why yeah. we went with 1,000 litre. Definitely. OECs. Yeah. Um, and then through here, we just have our, um, our RO section, yep. basically. Taking Which advantage of the, the... old uh, bathroom in the shed, so... Bathroom shower facilities in the shed. <laughs> and it's, it's very simple. Um, it just comes out of the old shower slot. <laughs> There's nothing too fancy going on. Um, we're probably due to change the filters in there. Um, yep. And it just drops in here, and then... That's the um, the RO top off, and that runs yeah, right. up through That's the roof. The lead and that it feeds and yeah, all the we have all the goes. all of the wastewater goes into the water tank. Yep, great rainwater so collection the tank. So yeah, beautiful. Um, yeah, fairly basic. As you can see, we went through quite a lot of salt um, <laughs> early days. So a problem of the past, nicely done. Yeah, that's it. So. As you can see, we're a bit lazy and keeping things tidy, but no one's out here ever, so. Nah, it's a shed for a reason. Yeah, that's it. <laughs> that's exactly right. Yeah. Is a good segue onto, you talked about your alkalinity um, and, and salinity and that. What sort of parameters are you, are you aiming for and what sort of parameters very, have you got in this system at the moment? Very basic. Um, your standard 460 yep. calcium, um, around that 1300 magnesium-ish, maybe a little bit higher. Yes. Um, pH is at eight at the moment. I'd like yep. it to be a touch higher, but. Sure. It's, everything it seems is. happy, so I'm not yeah. too stressed about it. Yeah. Um, don't go stress in chasing pH. My yeah. system's like 7.9. Yeah. I don't have any issues with growth, so. Yeah. Can't and imagine yeah. what it'd be like if the pH was 8.5. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Obviously phosphates, trying to keep as low as possible. Um, we battle to keep it under 0.1. Yep. Um, so if we're under 0.1, that's grouse. Oh, the point one's um, awesome. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. You don't want to strip it too much. I mean, you've got a, a mixed reef. We'll, we'll talk about the corals and stuff soon, but um, yeah. yeah, I mean, things like the leathers and the zoas and the elegants and stuff I can see there are all going to love a little bit of phosphate in the water. Yeah, yeah, that's it. Um, as far as alkalinity, um, we've had a bit of a drop recently because we've okay. added a lot of SPS frags, probably yep. doubled our SPS over the yeah. past like <laughs> two months. Yeah. And uh, we were running at around at eight, mark pretty consistently yep and then we, when we added all those sbs our alk just absolutely plummeted <laughs> um and that's why we started dosing extra alk yeah all yep. the other parameters are no issue with the the aquaforest um stuff yes um but we're now dosing we started with like 21 mil and we were fine with that and then it just they just kept sucking it up <laughs> we're now at 50 58 mil extra of alk on yeah, top well. of the 27 i think of okay. all the other part three um and we're just starting to see it rise and it got down to like 6.4 i think was the just lowest kept going it went down to. Kept putting more and more elk in and it yeah. still just kept going down we were down. pumping it up by like 10 mil 20 mil a day just yeah. trying to get it to go and it just wouldn't budge and it's finally moving up so <laughs> Um, That's probably a combination of two things you touched on the SBS frags, but I would also put that down to probably the addition of the new light. Yeah. Um, just filling in a little bit of the, the, the dark spots in between and just giving the whole tank a little bit more par. Yeah. We'll just, even the existing, even your LPS and stuff will just start to really consume a lot more. So. Yeah. yeah combination of the two and i mean that's an awesome sign when, when yeah. your tank yeah, starts sucking up elements yeah. you're onto a good thing yeah 
Yeah, we're pretty stoked with how it's going, considering it's our first tank, and I mean, we're still we're still learning a lot every day about little things. Something goes wrong, <laughs> and it's just like, well, how did that happen? And you figure out why, and it's a learning try curve. and yeah, just try and get rid of that issue if, it's, if it could happen <laughs> again. Like. It's basically all this added stuff that's come in here. We were trying to keep it simple and then it's like, well, we don't want that happening again. So we added the UV and just keep adding stuff. It's just yeah. never ending. You think no you've shortage. spent all the money you need to spend and then No shortage of gadgets in this <laughs> reefing hobby, that's for yeah. sure. But we should talk about the reason why we do all this and that's everything inside the glass box. Yep. Um, maybe we'll start with the fish and then uh, we can have a look at some of the corals and, and go from there. Yep. Um, we've probably got a lot more tangs than what a lot of people would have. Um, we had a little bit of aggression, but it all seemed to have fizzled out. Um, we did have a Scopaz tang in there, and he was a little turd, basically. Um, <laughs> and every time it's pretty we unusual added, for Scopaz. They're normally yeah, a pretty happy-go-lucky fish. Every time we added something, he just went it, basically. Yeah, him and, right. Between him and the Coral Beauty, yeah, yeah. he would attack all the tangs, and the Coral <laughs> Beauty would attack everything else. Um, but, a little one-two punch going on. Yeah, so... We've had to be a little bit careful about what we added. Yes. Um, we did have, there is a female Watanabe in here. Yes. Um, there she is there. Oh, yep, yep. Um, we did add a male with her and the Coral Beauty destroyed it. Yeah. And he was three times the size of the Coral Beauty. Yeah, right. But, um, Coral Beauty still packed a punch. We've, we've tried to get him out many times. He just, <laughs> he just hides, he can't get under the rock work. So we're just leaving him for now. Um, but yeah, a fair few tangs. Most of them have gone in similar times and similar size. Yep. Um, so this unicorn went in the same with the stripey, the tamini, and um, the hippo blue. Oh, yep, yep. They all went in at the same size, and obviously you can see who gets the most food. The <laughs> unicorn is just towering them. Um, yeah, he's a beautiful fish, though. Sensational yeah, colors. He's, he's awesome. Just a real cool presence about him as he just look at him just patrolling his yeah. tank back and forth there. And he thinks he's the boss, <laughs> wow. but I don't think he is. You don't think he is? Who do you no, think is the boss? I think the yellow tank's the boss. Yeah, okay, yeah. well, you know, in today's no climate- No one bothers if, him anymore. If the yellow tank's the boss, there's worse things that could happen. Yeah. So and that's quite a, quite a serious fish for a uh, first reef tank. He's just one of those fish you had to have. We, we got really lucky. Um, there was a local guy, oh, I can't remember his name for the life of me. Um, he was shutting down his tank and yes. I saw that he had a yellow tank in there. Yep. Um, and he basically gave it to us for a really, really good price if we would take all the corals out of his tank as well, because yep. he didn't want them to, to die or whatever. Of course. Um, and he only wanted to keep a couple of the trackies that he had in his tank, which yep. were probably the, the prized pieces of, yeah, of coral of in there. So, yep. um, there isn't a hell of a lot left in the tank of what came out of his tank, mm -hmm. apart mm -hmm. from the yellow tank. Um, we traded up a lot of it yep. in, in, in the local shops that we were going to. Yep. Um, the only, there's probably a couple of zoas in here and I reckon, I'm pretty sure this, um, the, the morph, rock. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The morph rock yep. came out of his tank as well. Yeah, um, nice. We did have a really, really large gurney. Um, unfortunately that, that died when we had a little bit of a salinity drop. Sure. But he was, he was massive. He would have been the size of the big of these fungi is there. Yeah. Yeah. Um, which they're probably our favorite corals, to be honest. Yeah. I really, really like the way they. They look, they're always happy. Looks a um, treat. And the little uh, skunk clowns live in there. Yep. I don't know if you can see yeah, him in yeah, there. Yeah, you can see the skunks up there. Yep, yeah. yep. He'll be deep in there. He normally is. Switches between the Duncan and the little <laughs> hammer there. We weren't having much luck with our with our um, standard clowns in, in housing anything. So yep. we got told that the, the skunks were, they'll just house whatever they can find and they sure. did straight away and it worked. We bought, the, we bought the skunks and the two Fungies at the same time, yep. put them in the tank and they just went straight, straight out of each other. Straight into it, happy it days. Yeah. And you don't have issues with the standard clowns fighting with the no, They just stay tanks. at their either ends. Never all, seen any aggression whatsoever. Got a long enough um, tank, they've got enough distance between them. Yeah, yeah, exactly right. Um, so yeah, the yellow tank got added a little bit later. Yep. We had no aggression whatsoever between the yellow and the stripey, which we thought we might. Yes. Um, and then the purple tang is the most recent addition yeah, beautiful and fish. that's how we figured out that we're fairly certain the yellow tang might be the boss because that was when a little bit of aggression started <laughs> um, yeah well i mean which the purple, was to be expected zebrasoma family so the yellow and purple were 
same sort of sub family. Yeah. yeah. So Yellow would have definitely seen him as a threat. Yeah. And he's a little bit bigger, so he would have had to get a punch in early. Yeah. So, um, but we could be wrong. The purple might be the boss. It just doesn't show much aggression. He just floats around and does his thing. One of those mafia bosses. Yeah. That doesn't have to be in every fight. Everyone just knows. Yeah. Yeah. That's it. That's it. Um, Fair few Rass. Uh, we've got the Banana Rass there, who's the daughter's favourite. Lovely. She picked, she picked him. We yeah. wanted one for a long time. We were going into Reef Galleria and um, they had one in their display and every time we went in there, they tried to catch it and couldn't. So we, <laughs> they ended up ordering one in for us, which was good. Uh, that's a good job. Um, uh, we've got this, we're still unsure of what this, this Rass is. Yeah. I just call it a Midnight Rass. I don't know if that's right, but really oh. like the colors on him. You know me, I'm absolutely no Rass expert, but I can say he's a beautiful Rass. Yeah. I really like that just electric blue yeah. slash purple line at the top and bottom. He's and normally not this photogenic. I was gonna say he's been very generous <laughs> with the camera there. <laughs> That's I'm unusual. trying to take photos of him to show you and Dave and <laughs> just can't get anything good. Uh, we've got the hawkfish up the back. Yeah, you love the little uh, little flame hawk up there. Yeah. Just chilling on the frag rack as they do. Yeah. Um, we have only a couple of Antheas left. We started with five. Okay. And just found they just kept picking each other off. Yeah, yeah um, buggers. And there's def definitely one of them has turned into the male, but he's normally hiding. <laughs> but he's, yeah, he's definitely got that purple growth sure. on his fins and stuff. Um, the little convict tang. Convict's a beautiful tang, yeah. yeah. He's, he's probably one of my favorites. Yeah. We had one early days and lost in our- um, In the wipeout. In the wipeout. Yep. Um, so we went another one and he's been really good. He's probably the most, between him and the Tamini, they're probably the most active fish in the tank. They swim around, as you can see, they're eating off the back wall. Yeah, yep. Um, it's good. You're, you want fish that have a bit of movement, you know, it gives yeah. plenty of life to the tank and, yeah. and all that, which is, which yeah. is great. Um, obviously, the, the fox face, he's yeah. one of the originals who, who kicked on through the white spot. Beautiful. Um, nice one spot fox face there. Yeah. So him, the Tamini, the hippo, and the stripey. I can't remember what they're called, the zebra. Yep. Um, oh, the, yeah, yeah. They're the, they're the four fish that live through the white spot, so they'll live through anything, I hope. <laughs> <laughs> They've definitely seen it all, no, that's yeah. good. We've um, got a little school of chromis there too. Yeah, the chromis, haven't lost any yet. We added eight and we still have eight, nice. I believe. Do you find they um, fight at all? Haven't seen any, okay. haven't noticed anything. Um, oh, you'll notice if they do. <laughs> yeah, I've been told that makes a lot of sound at night. Yeah, they can really loud. do this. Um, it sounds a little bit like a Star Wars pod racer. They kind of just go, 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 go. <laughs> <laughs> it's very odd. <laughs> you don't believe it's coming from those fish and then yeah. you actually see it first hand. You're like, oh, okay, it does. Um, this little guy here. I was just about to ask about him. He's just chocolate goby, I popped think. up on cue there just to um, filter through some sand. Super interesting fish, but I think he causes more mayhem than what he does. <laughs> like he just drops sand on everything. Yes. Um, you yeah, see the Zoa rocks just covered in sand. All the corals that are on the ground have got yeah, pools yeah. of sand Terminara in. Terminara is a little sand pit yeah. there. <laughs> and he's just digging holes. The rocks are probably sitting on the bottom of the glass now. He just keeps digging holes. Um, <laughs> but he's doing his job like, he does a really good job at what he's supposed to be doing, so. Yeah, your sand is spotless, um, so, you know, that's what he was there to do and yeah. he's done that well. Um, there's two sand sifting, um, Starfish in there as well. Yep. Um, and we do have a, I can't remember what the name of it is, and he's probably hiding always. Um, a little red, little tiny little red starfish. I can't remember what they're called. Oh, is it um, a biscuit star or? Oh, possibly. Yeah, 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 yeah super popular. Um, yeah, they, we'll, you only see them every now and then, they'll bury themselves in the rock work and. Yeah, they're just really good hiders. I remember um, the family coming around and they're like, oh, we're gonna see the red starfish. <laughs> and for about four weeks, they'd come around every week and nowhere to be seen. <laughs> and then he'd come out like three hours after they were gone, I have to take a photo. He just knows. He right knows. on cue. Um, as far as fish go, I think that's about it. Um, there is a Malinaris, I think that's how you pronounce it, Rass yep. in there as well. Yep, yep, did um, see him kicking about before. You've got a pretty good mix in there from, I mean, yeah. you've got a few angels, butterflies, fox face, yep. tangs, chromis, we, antheas. We, I think we do want to add another Rass. Yep. And we were eyeing off another tang at some point, but I think we're going to not do that. I think there's <laughs> enough in there. So. You don't want to rock the boat too much? Yeah, exactly right. You've got a nice harmonious tank there at the moment, so I yeah. mean, it'd be, yeah, it would be rolling the dice to mix that up again. All right, well, that, that's the fish. What about the corals? You've got a super broad range of corals in there. Talk us through what you've got, what you love, what yep. you don't love. Um, we haven't been too picky with corals. 
Um, yep. We sort of just go into the shop and just whatever looks like something we haven't got, <laughs> we just buy it and yep. try and find somewhere to put it. Give it a shot and um, see how it works. So torches and hammers is normally spread through this area here. Yeah, yeah, um, let's have a look at those. Probably the main noticeable one would be the West Australian. I can't remember, well, that's the Melinaris there. Um, <laughs> the West Australian there. Um, yeah, he's got some cool sort of frammer like extensions on him there where he's not quite sure if he wants to be a torch or a hammer. Yeah, we, look, we looked at him uh, at Deer Park for a few, I reckon for a month or two. He was yeah, sitting right. there and then we decided to get him. He's just chewing on your conscience for a while. Yeah, yeah. so, um, but I, yeah, I don't think we have too many named corals. Yep. Um, a lot of it's just like, yeah, we like that color. Let's, yeah, let's have a crack at that. Yeah. Um, obviously the, the elegance, the pink one was the first one we got. Nice. And we fell in love with that. Yeah. And now he's just getting smothered by the ones we surrounded him by. It's, it's a beautiful um, elegance garden. I love, yeah, what have you got, four in there? Yes. Yeah. yeah. The yeah. one at the, the one behind the pink one is probably my favorite. Okay. It's got those little pink tips to it. Yep. Um, there's actually, if you can, if it's, if you see it open, it's got a lot of um, texture through the faces of them yeah, as nice, well, rather nice. than just being like a flat color like the green ones are. Yep, yep. Um, it's really cool. I must admit, you normally see elegants tucked away on the sand. Um, don't often see them up on the rock work and how good do they look up there? It's just yeah. like an intense torch garden yeah, yeah. with ridiculous color on the inside. So for the, for the size, that they are and the price they are oh it's yeah we're spoiled here yeah. in australia with and, our access to elegance corals and we've there. we've had a fair few torches yep and these two he's the only one who survived since the start yep yep i reckon we've had 10 torches over the the 14 months yes and we just don't have any luck with them for yep. whatever reason they just yep. slowly die out and as you can see even this one's lost a couple of heads yes um that head down there was a, a little gold torch yep um, yeah, there is just, just a tough for, coral. For whatever there. reason, that one's happy as. Yeah. The gold one there is happy. <laughs> yep. Um, but for, yeah, sometimes they just. just and everyone, every, everyone I speak to about it just goes, yeah, that's just torches. That's just torch, yep. So they're supposed to be a, a, an entry level friendly coral. Yeah, and they no, just they're die. not. <laughs> they are not. They are very, very tricky. Yeah. Um, we'll go over that section later because that's sure. all new. Yep. All that rock work's new with a lot of a bit more named flags sure. and stuff like that just just before you do move on though yep. we've got to talk about a couple of these hammers in here yep. though because yeah we looked at the torches but this yep. hammer garden's really starting to fill out very very yeah, nicely definitely um it's some great we've got yellow. a couple of colors there that are a bit common but no um, look that green is toxic as yeah. beautiful reverse a couple I, of different gold shades i really there. like the colors on on the one next to the acan yes and the one above the two smaller ones yes yes There's something about that turquoisey color that yeah, um, really nice. I don't know if it's the Kessels that bring it out, but... Yep. Really that's one thing Kessels do do well. They give great shimmer and great color. Yeah, yeah that's it. Um, but that green that green guy, the big one, he yep. was in one of the first corals we added to the tank. Yep, yep. Um, he's a bit closed at the moment. He normally just fills out everything behind yeah, it. So, yeah, well, we are here um, first thing in the morning. You know, you put the lights on a little bit yeah, earlier, but um, yeah. in reality, the lights have only been on for a while and the tank's yeah, exactly already right. this open, yeah. which is incredible. And we did originally have them in the Toxic and the and the, the, I don't know what color that is, a darker green. Yep. Um, we had them in the opposite position. Okay. Um, and he was just shading them all out. So we put him <laughs> further back. So, because the toxic's the one that you want to see. For sure, more, yeah, it deserves so. the prime location, that's for sure. Yeah. And I like this leather, just it's a cool position on the edge of the rock there. Just yeah, so. we've, we've trimmed him back a few times. <laughs> um, He's been growing out. There's another one behind, It's actually, I think it's the same one we put the off cut of him on a rock and wedged him behind the didn't want to get rid of him, so wedged him behind the rock work over there. <laughs> and he's pretty much touching the glass for about that much. He's just huge now. Probably going to probably gonna have to get rid of him, I think. Uh, <laughs> just he's going to start real coming up behind all the SPS <laughs> and probably stinging them, I guess. See, so. I, can, I can see him poking through there. If I look down the side of the tank, yeah, I can see him there. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> As I said, the lights are only just uh, coming on and he's already filling up that back yeah. section. Yeah, exactly right. Um, <laughs> And as far as this side, that the green, the big toadstool, he was one of the original ones as well. He's put on so much size, it's not funny, especially in the last few weeks. So I think he might be sucking a lot of the alkalinity out of the uh, out of the water column. To be honest, of all of the pieces in your tank, I, th I think that big green toadstool is my favourite. Yep. Um, corals that we don't see in mixed reefs all that often. Yep. Normally because they do take up a bit of space, but. Yep. 
What a showpiece, man. It is bright, it's got movement, it's going to be such a, if I know Toadstools are going to be fairly dramatic and change from day to day, yep. different shape, different size, different color. We did have a, a really, really large white Toadstool yep. that we ended up taking into Dave. Yep. Um, and he was sitting just here basically and he covered he ended up getting like that big and he was covering everything. Yeah, yeah. He wasn't like this toadstool, how he's just sort of, sort of, ruffling sort of drooping. Up a bit. Yep. He just grew straight up like a mushroom <laughs> and just shaded everything under him. Just and put a literal umbrella in the tank. Yeah, yeah. yeah exactly right. Yeah. He just grew unbelievably no, fast. Fair enough to remove that one, I guess. Yeah. I mean, it's and all I think, good I well think Dave, Dave moved him on to like someone with a, a huge tank. I yeah, think, so. yeah, cool. cool. Um, so it's good to see him go to a good home anyway. Yeah, well, I mean, corals, if you do have a monster tank, um, it's really difficult to find corals that actually look like you've put coral in the yeah. tank. So yeah. something big like that would actually, you'd notice it and that'd yeah. be fantastic. So it's a win yeah. all around. Yeah, so we've got a little bit of everything just scattered around. Mm. Um, a few encrusting corals. Yep. No idea what the names are on them. Um, <laughs> anything we find yellow, we normally try and add. Yep. It's a color we don't find that often. Sure. Um, plenty of zoas floating around. Probably a little bit of regret with the one on the rock work there, but we'll worry about that when we need to. Um, <laughs> I love this Duncan, man. The heads, the yeah. size of the heads on that Duncan the is Duncan's ridiculous. Duncan's gone crazy. Um, it's like it's trying to imitate the elegance. I mean, when you look yeah. at the, the Duncan there, it doesn't look yeah. that different from the uh, elegance rock over there, which is yeah. And that's super, a little cool. that's a little frag of the Duncan there. Oh wow, yeah, awesome. Um, so we probably don't want him to grow as big as what that <laughs> one is, but we just put him there because we had the space. They're just um, yeah, really big heads. Yeah. Super, super cool. And yeah, yeah. it's open and loving life. Yeah. And obviously the gold torch, um, little frogs one. There is a little green and yellow flower. Oh, yes. Yep. Flower pot down the back there. Yep. Um, that's one of the wife's favorites, but um, I think we moved him there because that was the only spot that was out of the shade from the giant toadstool that was okay. in there. Yep. Um, <laughs> we love our fungiers, obviously. Yeah, um, yeah. This was the first one we got. Um, and then, yeah, Reef Galleria had one of these long tentacle ones in there and we just fell in love with them. Long um, tentacle fungi is so cool, yeah. We had two or three, we lost them all in the, um, in a salinity drop. Yep. Um, and then we just had to get more again. They're so awesome. For sure. I actually only just noticed the second one there. It's just yeah, the little green one, yeah. <laughs> getting smothered by the I tentacles. I keep having to move them. They just, they slowly work their way right into the corner of the tank and um, <laughs> I can't clean the glass. So I just have to get in there every couple of weeks and just, just push it back push into place. Back. Classic. But I don't want to push them too far because then they'll, you know, they'll have blues with the... Um, For sure, yeah, when they're getting an extension else. like that, they'll go near other stuff. I also love this Blasto, man. This, yep. uh, that's beautiful color, nice and fat and fluffy. And We have tried to create a little, a little Blasto garden there, but yep. they're just very, very slow growing. Yeah, indeed. Um, a couple of them just keep falling off the rocks. And I think the mushroom, the, the orange mushrooms there are just taking over a little bit. Well, that, that mushroom's done an interesting thing too. He's got a nice little bounce in the yeah, middle there. Yeah, I don't know what's going on with that. <laughs> just adding $100 notes to it, which yeah, is pretty cool. Yeah. <laughs> After you buy it, that's a bonus. Yeah, exactly right. <laughs> nice um, bit of red cap growing out on the side here. That'll be pretty yeah. cool there once that uh, fills in. You just have to keep it trimmed, otherwise she will shade. Yeah, exactly <laughs> right. It is, it is starting to shade the little purple hammer behind it already. Yep. Um, and yeah, it's um, that went in at a very, very small frag. It's one of the cars we've noticed a lot since we added that blade that has just gone crazy yep um the sps up there they yep. were both put in as colonies yep um oh you're probably better at the names than i am um, looks like a millie and I, i'm not right, actually sure millie. what this guy is but yep. yeah but the millie's gone crazy yep um i've already i think that's the second bunch of frags we've got off him <laughs> um for from what i'm um uh, fairly certain they're normal, normally a bit of a slow growing it can millies. depend. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Some of them will do nothing. Some of them will grow before your eyes. So, yeah. yeah. And then the one at the back with the green, um, he's only just started okay. to look like he's ready to be fragged. Yep. Um, he's got great polyp extension. He was just encrusting for a really long time. Yeah, okay. Um, and now he's gone a bit crazy. Um, I, I can notice a big difference on what he did come in. He just looked yes. like a very tight knit bunch and now he's starting to, to branch out a little bit. Yep. Um, and the green SPS there, the really furry one. Yes. Again, you pokey. probably know the names better than what I do. Yeah, yeah, green um, pokey. He's put on a lot of size as well recently. Oh yeah, it'll grow um, quick. And also don't be surprised if you find bits of green pokey just like growing on your wave maker everywhere. and yep. on the silicon on the other side of the tank. And yep. they are renowned for just 
that's all right. somehow spawning and appearing yep. in other spots. But Anything the cool thing is it's super easy to frag then because yep. you can just literally pop Take that bit off. off and put it on the tile. Yep. You don't even have to cut the original yep. mother. Yeah, exactly right. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that's always handy, isn't Definitely. it? Definitely. Um, the little yellow fungi are there. Yeah, really yeah, like beautiful. Him. He's put on a bit of size as well. Um, yeah, it looks great. Yeah, we're pretty scattered across everything. We just we just go to the shop and yeah, we like that color. Let's yep. find somewhere for that in the tank. Um, we do want to add a clam. Yep. Um, we're waiting to get our alkalinity up and stable before. Sure. This is, from what we understand, they're pretty finicky about parameters and stuff more than a lot of things. Can be. Um, yeah. The sand is something I'd be slightly worried about. Might yep. need to prop him up a little bit off the sand. Yep. You won't like too much sand in it. But, okay. um, yep. but yeah, I mean, with the extra light you've got on the tank now, um, yeah, once those parameters are sweet, I think you'd be good to try a clam. Yeah. One coral I did want to point out is yep. another one that um, you don't see in reef tanks all that often is the toxic green pallies. Yep. Um, man, they're a cool coral. I know pallies get a get a rap, but um, yep. Very aggressive. Got a heck of a presence. Like it just glows from yep. the other side of the room. Yep. And um, we did actually. We went through a stage. We were like. Let's not bother with zoas, let's just get platys because they grow yep. faster and bigger and yep. they look a lot better. Um, but yeah, our, we weren't happy with that. That's our second sort of zoa garden. We weren't <laughs> happy with the first one. All yep. the uglier colors. Always, took over man. That's what they do. So, <laughs> so we ended up switching him out and, and having another life. crack. Yep. Um, yeah, that, that, that green platy's put on a lot of size since, since we put him in. Um, yep. He doesn't look too happy at the moment. I think there's a bit much flow for him. Yeah, okay. Um, he was more happy when the when all the uh, power heads were a bit clogged up, I think. <laughs> <laughs> so, but everything else needs more flow. So um, yeah, oh, the pallies will adjust. Don't worry. Yeah, yeah, exactly <laughs> that's what right. they're known to do. So what I'm worried about is if he somehow branches up, up yeah, to the, to the rocks. I, I want him to come down, but it's probably not much of a chance in that. <laughs> nothing ever <laughs> happens. Do the, the opposite way. of what you want. That's yeah, for nothing sure. happens the way you want it to happen. So. Um, we've got a nice blue stag at the back. That's probably one of my favorites. Yeah, beautiful. Um, I really like the blue colors. Yep. That's um, a really cool spot too, the way that's going to grow up behind the... Um, yeah, the frag rack's going to have to move, I think. <laughs> <laughs> He'll just support the frag rack to make sure it doesn't fall down. Yeah, but that's um, No, that's cool. I like the uh, bird of paradise in front of it there too. Really nice. Yeah. That looks great. Good color, good polyp extension. Going to have to start fragging him too, I think. At the back, so he starts coming forward a bit away from that blue stag. Sure, yeah, yeah. Just before they start having a bit of a turf war. Yeah. Um, and then, yeah, this section here is where we had that giant toadstool. Yep. And when we removed him, we decided, oh, let's add some more rock work, a bit more height, and yes. um, create a bit of a cave, and then just slap as many SPS in as we can For sure. as we can fit. Yep. Um, so we went down to uh, Aquaristic. Aqu Aqu Aquamarine Aquaristic. Yeah, it's a tough thing. <laughs> John on the team down there. <laughs> yeah. Um, and we've got a few of their signature corals. Um, yeah, great. All in frag, so um, hopefully we have a lot of luck with them. Uh, we've got the Zappo on the side. Yep. Uh, firecracker, the strawberry cheesecake. Um, that one at the back there, that light blue, I yeah, think is my color. favorite color. Uh, I think yep. that's the nebula. Yep, yep. Um, the ghost drop at the back, obviously Beautiful. the red the red dragon. Yep. Um, this little turquoise one, no yeah, idea what that one is, but I'm quite yeah. happy with the colors on that. Yeah, yeah. Um, and yeah, so that's, we're really keen to see that start start growing out. It's time really to take keen. off. Well, you've got polyps out, some good color there. So yeah. it's, it's doing everything it should. Yeah. You've also got, is this a bubble gum digi up here? Potentially. <laughs> <laughs> it's got the um, nice bright tips, which looks good. Yeah. I've also got, uh, I really like this uh, Monty here. The color, it's difficult to show on camera, but it's the bluest thing in the tank by, by a mile. Yeah. Super, super bright. It's almost violet, isn't it? Yeah, yep. stunning. And this uh, this bird's nest, this Hystrix, the toxic yellow yep. Hystrix is gonna really look cool growing off he's, the side there. He's been fragged back three or four times now. Yep, um, yeah, I can see some up there on, yeah. on the frag racks. And the, even the frags just go crazy, like. Yeah. Um, there's something about it, he's not directly under any light. Uh, oh, he's got a bit of the Kessel, but he's a little bit past where the blade yep. extends to, because the, yep. the blade only came in a 77 inch and uh, wasn't probably quite wide enough for yep. us, but yep. we just made it work and slapped it in the center. Yep. Um, but yeah, uh, that colony at the back, once again, I'm not sure on the name, but it's quite, it came as quite a large colony, that Maroni, yep. the red um, SPS at the back. Uh, he was probably one of the first SPS we put in. Sure. Um, he's always seemed happy, but never really, hasn't really put on any size. 
that's SPS. Um, Sometimes they'll sit dormant for six months and yeah. then they'll take off. Yeah. But the Monty at the top, we love that one. Like the, the different colors of the new growth. It's, yeah, beautiful. It's really cool to see. Definitely. Um, when we were putting him in, he, he broke. So I just <laughs> glued the broke pitch right next to it. So, um, it's made an instant garden. Every, everything's a learning curve, yeah. Yeah, exactly. No, you've done a fantastic job for someone with their first ever reef tank. I know, well, I assume, because I've never kept freshwater stuff myself, but I assume there's a, there's a little bit of a crossover with some things, but then on other things, it's just polar opposite. Well, actually, I think that once you wrap your head around the reefing side of it, yep. it's less maintenance, yeah, believe yep. it or not. Yep. Um, once you set up an automatic water change. Yeah. <laughs> once you put all but the you're gadgets never, in. <laughs> you're never sucking the crap out of the sand or yep. anything yeah, yeah. like that. Like, yep. As long as you've got the right fish and the cleanup crew all doing their job, then um, it's a, I think it's a lot easier. I For really sure. do. Um, yep. I spend a lot less time on this. I find I spend more time on it every day, like, you know, five, sure. 10 minutes here and there. Yep. Whereas uh, we never had a tank this big yes, in salt water. I think enough. the biggest we had was like four foot, which okay. is half this size. Yep. Um, but like, you know, every Sunday you'd be two or three hours. Yeah, like, right, okay. Pulling the rocks out, brushing the shit. Oh, the bugger that, yeah. Like, yeah, it was yeah. Um, <laughs> But the same thing, we were just, we just overstock every every fish tank that we get. We just overstock it. So yeah, fair enough. Um, yeah, so you end up sucking all the sand out, and you know, bucketing four or five buckets of sucked out sand, and it's just brown water. Brutal. Um, so yeah, that's that's why we just love that water change unit. Um, yeah, that does it's the trick. So well. good. We were carting around a big a big tub yeah. around from the shed and filling it up, and hundred yeah. liters at a time, doing ten percent changes oh, a yeah. week. It was pretty rough. Hard work. <laughs> Hard the garden was loving it. But. Yeah. <laughs> you can imagine. Yeah. Well, now that you're, how, how far into the tank did you say you were? 18 months? I think months? we're about 14. 14, 14 months. months? Maybe 15, yeah. What's, what's the future plans for the system now that uh, you've reached that milestone? Um, I think we're going to let it sit for a little while. Yep. Uh, once we can get the parameters right, just keep adjusting them as we need. Obviously, yep. we're going to need to pump more in. Sure. Um, we're looking at ideas of, of Calquasa yep. for our alkalinity. Yep. Maybe getting their pH up a little bit more. Sure. Um, but still on the research side of that. Yep. Um, still trying to find out the benefits and the and not so benefits. We're finding now <laughs> with how much we're dosing that we're almost not even um, having much RO come in anymore. Yeah. Um, so I think Calquas is then going to be a bit more than that again. Yes, that will um, add a, an extra layer of difficulties. <laughs> yeah, exactly right. Um, yeah, as I said, we want to get want to get a clam. Um, there's a couple of other rafts that we've been eyeing off. Yep. Um, we've sort of got to that point now where our tank's pretty well stocked up. Um, there's always room for more. Of course. As you, as you would say. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, it's, um, it's tricky because you don't want to, as you said, everything's balanced at the moment. All the fish are happy. Yep. Um, we would love to add a, a high-end tang like an Achilles or something like that. But sure. I know yeah. it's going to, I know it's just going to wreak havoc on the tank. So I yeah. just, we'll be playing with fire a bit. Definitely. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Right. <laughs> um, but yes, the Lenardi Ras was one of them and I saw Dave's got them in stock at the moment. Um, yep. I think we're going to hold off for a little bit longer sure. before we add another fish. Yep. Unless something really comes across our, across our desk that we really like. Um, yep. we have been iron off, haven't seen one ever. Um, and I don't think, I think you said you haven't seen one ever. Mm -hmm. um, the Fijian yellow to toadstool. Oh yeah, yeah. Um, we're trying to find one of them. I'm searching every week for one. For um, sure. Yep. They're not having any luck whatsoever. So yeah, I've I'm seen hoping. some yellowish um, long polyp uh, leathers here in Australia, but yep. uh, yeah, definitely nothing that recreates that uh, beautiful yellow Fijian ones that you see online. Yeah, they look insane. So. Yeah, yeah. I'm not sure where I'm going to put it, but. <laughs> We've been eyeing one off for a long time and just haven't, yeah, haven't been able to find one. Yep, no, fair um, enough. But yes, I think, yeah, we're just going to let it sit for a while. Um, I think we're going to aim for that 10-year mark yep. and just watch it, really. Yeah, um, enjoy the fruits you know, of your labour. We think all the hard bit's done, hopefully. <laughs> um, you know, we'll probably have to upgrade the power heads and all that and, you know, all the basic maintenance stuff. But um, I think our one regret would be we should have gone wider. Um, a yeah, bit thin tank makes it tough. It's it's partially the reason why we leave that back wall natural. Yeah, give it a little more depth. And getting down behind the yes. rock work is nearly impossible. Yeah. Um, yep. 
if I drop something behind there now, it's pretty much gone. I can't, yes. I can't get my arm down there anymore. We have to use the tong and the tongs are useless. So. <laughs> <laughs> That's making it a challenge. Yeah. But as you say, I mean, if you were to go deeper. Yeah, um, it comes it out would... past our door. Yeah. I was, was actually speaking to the wife about it last <laughs> no. night saying, yeah, 10 years if we're still here and we're staying. Yep. We're going to renovate. We're going to move the door, make the door thinner and... Adjust the house and get to a bigger tank. suit the tank. Yeah, yep, I love it. <laughs> the addiction is well and truly taken off. And, uh, uh, and the, yeah, the other regret would be that I can't see it from a study. <laughs> Fair enough. Yeah. No, no. Well, I think you've done an incredible job for... I mean, just in general, you've done an incredible job. And then you add to that the fact that this is your first ever reef tank. Um, you've jumped in the deep end with a tank this size. Yeah, and um well, you've learned to swim because it looks fantastic. Yeah, yeah. You should be proud. I know you've gone through some challenges um, and I think any reefer that tells you they haven't gone through any challenges is um, the, probably the definition of a liar. Yep. It's, it's yeah, part and parcel yeah. with the hobby. Um, yeah, exactly. There's always challenges, but you've definitely had your share and um, you've come out the other end of the tunnel and uh, you've got this incredible, thing, uh, this incredible tank to enjoy as a result. So yep. uh, well done. And, uh, Keep doing the good things and um, <laughs> I look forward to seeing where the tank goes over the coming months and years. Yeah. No, thank you. Thank you very much for coming out. Cheers. All right, guys, there you have it. That is Troy and Danny's absolutely beautiful eight foot or 2.4 meter custom reef tank with all sorts of corals in there. I was going to say a mixed reef tank, but in reality, it's more than a mixed reef because it's got a bit of everything in there and it is really starting to find its strides and uh, really becoming a showpiece in that house. So huge thank you to Troy and Danny for making it possible for me to come over to your house and share your beautiful reef tank with the world. You've done a fantastic job and I really cannot wait to see just how far this tank goes in the coming months and even years because you are on the right path and it is just kicking goal after goal. If anyone out there does have any questions for either myself or for Troy or Danny, feel free to pop it in the comments section down below. I do personally reply to each and every comment there, so it is the best way to get hold of me. Other than that, guys, if you've enjoyed the video, please do give it a thumbs up and give all of your words of encouragement and congratulations to Troy and Danny in the comments section down below. If you're yet to become a subscriber of this channel, now's your chance to do so. It takes two seconds and costs no money whatsoever. Just hit that subscribe button down in the bottom corner. I'd greatly appreciate it. Other than that, guys, I hope you enjoyed the video. I love bringing you these tank tours and I've got even more to come with some various reef tanks at different stages in their life. So stay tuned and look forward to those ones in the coming weeks. Other than that, guys, till next time, stay safe and keep reefing. Cheers. Bye.